Hello, Manic Recurian here with a uh, another video. This one, again, is on the chart for Russia. This is almost like a series now. This is the third video covering the chart of Russia. The first one was for the, you know, this historical notion of Russia, the beginning of that in the year 862. The second video, I tackled the, the beginning of modern Russia from 1990 using the June 12th, 1990 date. And I talked about in that video how I could not find a, a time at all. What, what, what was the time that this new country was announced or the new constitution was signed? What, what was the new birth time, so to speak, for the modern Russia we know today? Uh, I found it so odd because we have times, you know, as I mentioned in the last video, we have times for countries that have emerged hundreds of years ago. We have very precise times for, for those country start, start times, start dates. But for a country that, that came into the world in 1990, only, you know, 30 plus years ago, it seems like there's no time. Anyway, so the person who, has, who, who was um, asking for this video to be done in the first place has provided a time. Uh, but what's interesting is it's not um, super clear necessarily. So, um, so let's see. So you say... Do, 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 do. Most astrologers use the time 1:45 p.m. Moscow time, because uh, because of because English astrologer Nicholas Campion uses this time in his book about world horoscopes. Nicholas Campion named such a time based based on the time when the first reports of journalists were received, and then deducted about 20 minutes. So even that is not super uh, <laughs> concise necessarily, or accurate but at least it's something um russian astrologers have repeated this but the time at 1 45 p.m is most likely inaccurate there is a video where the wall clock is visible the quality is not clear but it is clearly visible that there is no minute hand at nine so therefore the time is definitely not 1 45 p.m in my subjective opinion based on the poor quality of the video the time of acceptance of the de of this declaration of the declaration, excuse me, is either 1.50 p.m. or 2.11 p.m. It is difficult to make out exactly. And the reason for those two times, you know, because, um, you know, this person is saying there, there was a hand on the clock at, at 10 and 2. So it was either, you know, 2.10 p.m. or 2.11 p.m. or 1.50 p.m. Yeah. Um, it is difficult to make out exactly. And in any case, the exact time is probably between 1.45 p.m. and 2.11 p.m. I'll, la I'll leave a link to the video in another comment um, to this video. Maybe you'll see. And uh, yes, I did see, sort of, kind of. I, I went to the video. Um, maybe I'll link it in this description if, if you're interested in seeing for yourself and seeing if you can see the time on the clock. I could not. Um, I definitely saw a hand at 10, meaning, you know, uh, it was either 10 o'clock or something 50, if that makes sense. I didn't see the other hand at all. I, don't, I didn't see a hand at the number two. Um, but anyway, because you said it's either, <laughs> because you said it's between 150 and 210, I decided to just go with the time of 2 o'clock. Um, this all is not precise. It's probably not dead on accurate. But if we do have a birth time that is within 10 minutes, you know, give or take, I, I think that's accurate enough. I'm not going to get so specific that the degrees of the planets um, are going to make a huge difference here. The, uh, well... I say that though, but if we look at this chart, this, um, you know, of course the signs of all the planets will be the same, but this, in this video, we're mostly going to talk about the, the houses of the planets and the ascendant. Uh, because the ascendant is at the very end of Virgo, it actually could make a big difference um, if, if this chart, if this country was, you know, birthed into existence just a few minutes uh, prior or, or afterward. That could change the rising to Libra if if um, if this chart if this time if this time is too early, and the real time is a little bit later, uh, yeah, this planet uh, this um, country could have Libra rising, which would kind of change everything. Uh, but let's just use this time for now and just kind of go through the motions here and see what we can um, 
see what we can see here. Now, um, the person commenting, um, all together, all together, uh, you know, indicated that Mars is in the seventh house in the chart. And yes, we can we can definitely see that Mars is in Aries. Mars is in the seventh house. So. Um, <laughs> I think my initial reaction was kind of like, yikes, because, you know, seventh house is how you kind of deal with other people. It's your partnerships, especially for a country, it would be a lot of, you know, international diplomacy. And if Mars is there, that would show that your the nature of your relations to other entities, to other countries, would be primarily aggressive. Um, there'd be a lot of aggression there. There'd be a lot of, I don't know, plotting against one another or being suspicious, being competitive or... Um, fighting, so so that would show that Russia's um, the nature of Russia's diplomacy would be uh, probably less than ideal. That this country would be an aggressor. Um, you know, this would show that Russia would view other countries as being aggressive. Other countries would view Russia as being aggressive. There's a lot of aggression, maybe from both sides, maybe from all around. Um, and this is interesting too, because as I talked about in the last video. I, I kind of ranted and raved because it was such a beautiful chart. You had so many plants in domicile or exalted that it really looked like someone took a lot of time and consideration into coming up with a, a perfect time to start this country. But with Mars in the seventh house, that makes me question things a little bit. Um, you know, and this question becomes even more curious when we realize we don't necessarily, we may not have the exact time, but if this is accurate, you know, was the founder of this, did they even, t maybe they took into consideration uh, the the dates of the, the found foundation of the country. Maybe they didn't take it in the time into consideration. Maybe they didn't look at that. Or if they did, were they wanting Russia to be an aggressive country and have gr aggressive relations with its, you know, neighbors or, or international community? Um, I don't know. Honestly, I don't know why you'd want that for a country, but maybe there's something I'm missing with, you know, um, strategic diplomacy, that type of, type of thing. Um, but let's let's take a look at the luminaries. I like to start with the luminaries since they control so much of a, of a chart. We talked about in the last video how this country would be birthed with Sun and Gemini, Moon and Aquarius. I talked about how that was really, really nice because you have Sun and Moon trining, so that's an easy relationship. It, it's a really uh, strong, kind of positive, easy dynamic to have with the sun and the moon trining, but especially in air signs, I think, for countries, because air signs are, you know, very intelligent, they're very technological, especially when you apply this to nations. So, um, and Gemini and Aquarius in particular are more experimental than, um, you know, Libra, the third air sign. Libra is more about balance and harmony, but, but, uh, but Gemini and Aquarius are more experimental, more radical. They want to, they want to invent things. They want to come up with new ideas, new topics, um, new experimental ways of, of for, for, for society to be. So, so if you did want to be kind of at the cutting edge of, of I don't know, science and, and everything else as a country, Sun and Gemini, Moon and Aquarius makes a lot of sense. Plus, Moon is conjunct its own North Node in Aquarius. It's not exact. It's a few degrees off. But still, having the Moon so close to the North Node shows, um, shows that the country would have, you know, again, a really great time scientifically with knowledge and information, um, technology. But also, the moon represents the common people for a country. Um, sun usually represents the government or the elite. Moon is like the common folk. And with moon and Aquarius, I talked about how that's ruled by Saturn. Um, so, And Saturn also is like the authority, the, the government. Um, so that would mean that the, the, the common people are ruled by the government. The, and then Saturn is a final dispositor. It's in domicile and Capricorn. So that would make the, you know, authority figures very powerful. And they would literally kind of have, you know, the, the first say over before the common people. So make of that what we, what you will. Um, but at the same time, you know, or on the other hand, Moon conjunct North Node means that the common people would be in a good place. They would be, you know, living a... Um, a good life. And I'm not saying they are or aren't. I'm just saying that's how I would interpret this chart. Um, although the people would not have power or say compared to the government, the government would have the power, they would have the control. Um, this still puts the common people in a good place considering they, you know, moves conjunct north though. That's how I would read this. Um, but when we take the time into consideration, this would put moon in fifth house. This is a little bit curious, I think. Uh, fifth house is usually a kind of pr prideful and playful house. 
So this to me would show that there would be a lot of national pride. Um, and again, I don't know if there is or isn't, but that's that's what I would deduce from having Moon in fifth house. Um, maybe that was the intention of the founders of the country, or, or maybe that is the truth, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I would expect a lot of, of, of national pride with Moon in fifth house. Um, also Sun in the ninth house, this would show that this country would be very focused on higher ideas and beliefs. A lot of the time, historically, that is spiritual or religious, and I don't think we would see R Russia as particularly spiritual or religious. However, uh, like I talked about recently, Ninth House can be scientific as well. Ninth House is higher knowledge, higher information. Um, so Ninth House asks the bigger questions, like what happens after we die, or uh, are we alone in the universe? Now, you can answer all those spiritually or religiously, but you can also answer them scientifically. Um, and I think especially with Sun and Gemini and then Moon and Aquarius this is a very technologically oriented chart um, or scientifically oriented chart. So, you know, so I think Sun and Ninth House might at first seem kind of odd because it's like, well, wait a minute, Rush is not super religious or spiritual, or maybe they are, I don't know. Um, but this would show a general focus on higher learning, higher knowledge or wisdom, asking the bigger questions, etc. especially with Mercury in Ninth House Gemini as well. Something really interesting that you get when you apply this time is the position of Venus and Pluto. Now, Venus and Pluto are pretty much exactly opposite. Uh, Pluto is at 15 degrees Scorpio. I can use my arrow here. Um, and then Venus is at 15 degrees Taurus, so they are exactly opposing. And Scorpio and Taurus, this is the axis of possession. So, you know, possession can apply to, like, intimacy and relationships for, especially for humans. I don't know how much that applies to a country. But it also applies to, you know, what what <laughs> what are you investing in? What are, What's supporting you? So um, a lot of that is financial. It's like the financial axis. Both Taurus and Scorpio deal with money. Taurus is more like, you know, what are, what do you, what do you possess like on hand in a physical way? So like, it's the cash in your wallet, it's your assets, do you have a nice car? Uh, stuff like that. That That's Taurus type of money resources. Scorpio is more hidden or indirect, it often involves other people. So Scorpio would be like, maybe the money in your bank account or money that you're making an interest or money that you're paying an interest, money that you owe in, with debt, um, you know, that type of thing, or shared shared resources. For a country, it would also have to do with, um, you know, precious earth minerals. Scorpio has connections to, you know, to Hades or Pluto in mythology, and he was, you know, the god of the underworld. Scorpio does literally have to do with, you know, wealth that is under the, the earth, underground, um, precious metals, etc. So Taurus would be like, you know, you have like a lot of timber or yeah, as a country, you've got um, timber or I don't know, <laughs> other other assets or um, resources that are easily, you know, seen and possessed. Scorpio would be like, you've got a lot of, I don't know, oil, gold, things of that nature. And with Pluto in Scorpio and Venus in Taurus, I would expect a lot of wealth on both sides but especially when you put venus in the eighth house and then pluto in the second house this to me this really shows a lot of money that would be secret a lot of um secret private financial dealings um, maybe a lot of kind of hidden agreements that are done with other countries especially because you know second house represents your your on-hand resources how do you deal with money and with pluto there that would suggest that there's a lot of secrecy there a lot of um you know private um, qualities there. And again, a lot of it could have to do with, you know, precious earth minerals as well, or it could just have to do with general, you know, any, anything other, <laughs> anything at all related to wealth or money as well. Just something, it, it shows that Russia's economy is like largely underground, maybe figuratively or maybe literally. Maybe there's a lot of, you know, underground mining going on and also like figuratively underground dealings, trades, maybe with people or other countries uh, financially. So, um, yeah, and with that Ven Venus opposing Pluto, Venus in 8th house Taurus op opposing Pluto in 2nd house Scorpio, that, that just is so interesting. It shows a lot of underground financial dealings. Um, and I think it shows a lot of wealth in general. I think there would be a lot of wealth that would be very tangible, very seen, very obvious. And I think that's something that we know about Russia, that Russia has a lot of... Um, resources you know and again a lot of you know timber um i'm, I'm not an expert 
but a lot of uh, precious earth, you know, oil, gold, etc. And Russia has a low population too. There, it's a country with low population, high resources. There's a a big potential to make a lot of money there with all those um, resources and, and precious earth minerals there. Um, so yeah, very interesting stuff. R really, really interesting spin with kind of the economy and and resources there. Um, I think also Venus opposing Pluto is a a harsh aspect that could be, I don't know, like feuds or fights or disagreements. That, I mean, I don't know. It seems like a tense aspect. So on the one hand, there's a lot of abundance. There's a lot of wealth there. But I think with all these secret dealings, there's a lot of dysfunction there as well. There'd be, um, I don't know, like this constant kind of gritty fighting competitive energy about it. Very interesting. Um, but let's look at... Well, I want to talk about the rising, but before we get there, let's talk about one other thing. So we have Jupiter conjunct Chiron at 15 degrees uh, Cancer at the top of the chart. Now, this is so interesting because, <laughs> um, like I talked about in the last video, it, um, Jupiter and Cancer is exalted. So, like, you, you've got major Jupiter energy, really strong Jupiter energy. This would mean that this country would have a lot of expansion and abundance. They would expand greatly, not only financially, uh, but also diplomatically or culturally throughout the world, they would, you know, be known far and wide. They had to have relations with countries very far away. Um, I would expect all that with, with Jupiter exalted in the, the chart of a country. But when you combine, you know, Chiron into the mix, Chiron conjunct Jupiter, this would indicate that this country would have um, a lot of exp expansion regarding them being a... Uh, a mentor or a helper to other nations. So maybe Russia would help developing nations uh, develop so they'd be kind of a leader in that way. Um, what else here? But what's interesting is with the time applied, you have the Chiron-Jupiter conjunction in the 10th house. This puts it in a very prominent house. Maybe, you know, 10th house is pretty much the most prominent house since it follows the mid heaven. So it's the most public part of the chart and it therefore indicates you know in this in this um in this context it indicates the reputation and and the profile the public image of this nation so so what, what is how is this nation viewed internationally um and what's interesting is this would show that this country would be seen as a mother which is really almost kind of weird i think because you have um yes you know the midheaven is gemini so again that puts the focus on technology and information and being a um being a country that would learn from other countries but also teach other countries with gemini there's a lot of information going back and forth you know i'm learning from you i'm then taking that information and telling everybody else um or sharing that information um so there's a lot of there's a lot of trade. There's a lot of commerce with Gemini. Um, the you know the the I'm forgetting my words, but the the um, the part of the word Merc M E R C as in Mercury is in the word commerce um, with with Gemini and other Mercury ruled energies. There's always trading, trading of information, ideas, as well as more financial trading. So um, so yes, you know Midheaven is in Gemini, so that would be kind of what Gemini would be, or excuse me, what Russia would be seen as as being. A, a, someone who, right, a country that is taking a lot of information and also teaching it or providing it to other, um, other countries, I guess, dispersing information, coming up with new ideas or, or information technology as well. Um, you, you do have that side of it, but at the same time, you know, the 10th house pretty much is in line with cancer and the only planets in the, in the 10th house are in cancer as well. So although there is that Gemini side to the reputation there's also a cancerian side as well um, in particular with jupiter exalted in cancer it shows that this country would be seen as being known for its you know ideas its philosophies it would be there's this focus on higher learning again so it'd be seen as you know the i don't know the leader when it comes to new ways of thinking or, or living and again i'll say this a million times but i I don't know if that's true necessarily, but that's how I would read this chart. Um, and I don't, I don't know whether that's to say the true nature of the country itself or the, the founders, if they intended this. Um, 
but yeah, and especially with Cancer, Cancer is the mother sign. Cancer, um, you know, much like it, it reminds me of the chart of America because America, it's kind of a double-edged sword. America is like this mothering figure for for the world. So on the one hand, it does, you know, try to you know, support other countries, but there's a lot of dysfunction and uh, corruption that comes with that as well. So although, yeah, you know, the country is, is you know, a helpful influence at times for other nations and a leader, it can also, you know, do that way in a kind of, uh, in a way that's not always for the benefit of other countries. So that same theme comes to mind with this chart. Maybe Russia would be a mother um, to other countries, but, you know, mothers are not always super benevolent and, and nurturing. They, they definitely can be. They have that propensity. But, you know, if, if there's a, if one nation is kind of mothering the others, taking the other nations under its wing, I think there is potential there for it to be an almost kind of covert way of domination, I think. I, um, I think that's kind of the, the elephant in the room. So, yeah, I guess that's how I, I take that, that placement. Jupiter conjunct Chiron and 10th house Cancer. This country would be a mother, you know, maybe at times truly helping other countries, especially developing countries. Uh, maybe truly supporting their independence and helping them grow, nurturing them. Uh, maybe that you know would definitely be a part of it. But again, there's also that potential for covert domination through those means as well, through that mothering influence. Okay, wow, and I've already covered pretty much everything, um, but definitely the rising is a big thing I haven't gotten to yet. So... Um, so again, it's at the very, very end of Virgo. If it's just a couple degrees ahead, it would be in Libra, and that would kind of change everything. But with this chart, we have the polite and unassuming Virgo rising, <laughs> um, but also very, you know, savvy, uh, intelligent Virgo rising as well. Um, okay, so this, to me, would show that this country would be focused on, uh, well, Virgo is a mutable sign, so it kind of deals with a lot of different topics. Um, it, uh, on the one hand, it does deal a lot with information and technology, and that's something that keeps repeating again. Um, I think the I think the main themes that keep repeating are the um, the focus on innovation, information technology, um, gaining information, and then also the <laughs> being known for higher thinking, um, higher, you know, philosophy, spirituality, religion, or, or science, whatever it may be, being on the cutting edge of that. And then lastly, you've got that whole Pluto-Venus opposition with all that, you know, that, that wealth, that secret um, wealth here. But, but with Virgo rising, there'd be a focus on information technology, you know, learning. But there would also be a focus on, you know, the economy. Virgo is an earth sign. There's a lot of material focus there. So there would be a focus on, you know, material wealth. Um, and Virgo is kind of like the worker, you know. Uh, <laughs> Tor these other earth signs, like Taurus is more about enjoying um, physical possession and, and abundance. Uh, Capricorn is more like the CEO or the, or the boss. Virgo is more like the worker. So this to me would show that Russia would almost be, you know, like subservient in a way, which is really weird because that doesn't correspond with the rest of the chart. The rest of the chart has, you know, with the Jupiter and Cancer, Mars and Aries, um, Sun in the ninth house, it's and then Saturn um, and Capricorn. You know, all these placements are showing that this country wants to be a leader. It wants to be maybe not a leader in the way that it was with the Soviet Union, where it's just a, a top-down you know, I'm clearly in charge of you. I'm clearly the, the superstar of the world. I'm meant to be number one. Um, you know, it's not meant to be in that way, but still, in, in maybe a less obvious or less dominant way, this country is meant to be a leader. It's meant to be its own kind of, um, maybe at least regional superpower for sure. Um, so there's that focus there. But with Virgo rising, I feel like that's a little bit confusing. It kind of muddles the message to me because Virgo, again, is subservient. Virgo helps others. Virgo is a worker. Virgo, um, you know, I would think of a country that would be maybe producing resources for another country to consume, you know, being the worker, being, you know, doing a service, providing, making a good or, or providing a service for another country, having 
um, that type of economy. And again, I'm not an expert. I don't have the words, but but you know what I mean. Kind of like how China, you know, produces all the goods and America buys the, all the goods. That's that's what I would expect from um, Russia having a Virgo rising. And it re reminds me of Mexico's chart. Mexico has Virgo sun. Uh, there's this kind of... Um, there's this culture of hard work and of of modesty actually um so that that would be kind of echoed with virgo rising in this chart there'd be some kind of hum humility hard work ethic um producing goods for another country some kind of subservient nature so maybe you know there is that informational and technological focus but not in a way that is overly dominant you know virgo rising is one of the more kind of quiet risings i would think so um very interesting and then with virgo rising that puts the chart ruler as mercury at zero degrees gemini um ninth house gemini that makes a lot of sense to me that that could actually maybe explain a little bit more on why they would choose virgo rising if if they did if the founders did um because i think mercury at zero degrees gemini in the ninth house is in a very prominent position not only is it at the first degree of gemini the first degree is always very potent very um, especially outwardly expansive, and there's a lot of energy there. Um, you know, with the first degree of a sign, you get a, those the traits of that sign in a really, really tangible, strong way. So it would be a huge burst of Gemini energy. Not only that, but Mercury is in domicile in Gemini. That would mean all kinds of things. That would mean, if that's the chart ruler, that would mean that this country would be, you know, that's above all else, that would be what this country is known for, is its information, technology, um, it's uh, also like, you know, journalism or broadcasting. It would be really great with, you know, propaganda or making sure its narrative is heard, that type of thing. What else here? Um, but also with the chart ruler and domicile. Char like I always say, um, domicile planets are popular. They're well understood. And especially in the ninth house, which is such a public house, you know, ninth house along with 10th house are the two highest houses. These correspond to the highest parts of the sky. Um, so they're they're well seen. Everybody can see them and understand them and, and you know get that they're there. So so having chart ruler in the ninth house would show that this country would be well liked. It would have really great, you know. I mean, we talked about Mars in the seventh house, which would kind of ruin all this. But uh, Mercury in domicile as a chart ruler could maybe repair some of that and put this country as um, being you know highly esteemed or or at least well respected and. Um, be, you know a major player uh, on the world stage and that it, it would be respected by other nations um, you know at least the possibility is there when you have a chart ruler um, that's in domicile like that um, let's see and then also again you come back to that focus on higher learning and knowledge with the ninth house uh, let's see mercury yeah and I think that's really interesting combining mercury and Gemini with the ninth house it's a lot of information and technology, not only on this, you know, more mundane information, but also the, the spiritual, the, um, you know, going going beyond our horizons and expanding our, our knowledge into, you know, the unknown. Um, that's what, what I think of with the ninth house here. So, so um, Virgo rising seems a little bit confusing, but it does give the chart a, a super strong uh, chart ruling planet, I would think. Let's talk, though, about if the chart was just a little bit, you know, if the, I don't know, if the country's start time was even maybe 30 minutes later, it, I believe it would have a Libra rising. So um, I'm not going to put up the chart for that, but we can just imagine the rising is just, let's say it's at zero degrees Libra instead of 28 degrees uh, Virgo, so pretty much on the same position here. Uh, that would put the chart ruler as Venus at 15 degrees Taurus. Uh, this is also a strong position because, you know, <laughs> who who would have thought we also still get a chart ruler that is in domicile, and that's not unusual when you have a chart where more than half the planets are in domicile or exalted, which I still can't get over. That is so unusual. It's so unusual that you can even, you know, you'd have to wait years and years to get that many planets in domicile and exalted. So I, I, I said it over and over again in the last video, but I'll say it again. That is just insane that to have th that many planets, you know. Um, so they, the, these people definitely planned at least the, you know, the day to announce this or go forward on this. 
I don't know about the time. That is not as obvious to me. I'm not sure what their intentions were. You you got a lot of strong. I know I'm getting uh, going on a tangent here, but there's a lot of strong energy in the ninth house. That makes sense to me. There's all this higher knowledge. Um, you know, having the planets in general at like doing something around noon or you know one or two p.m. Anywhere around there is going to give you a pretty strong chart because you have the Sun and Mercury and Venus at the, the top of the chart. Um, so that, you know, generally makes sense. Um, in other words, if they had done it, you know, any time, you know, midday, basically, they would have a strong chart because the you know, these plants would be at the top in the um, 11th through 8th houses, I guess you could say. Um, and with this chart... But the the way they did it, though, especially with Venus in the eighth house, which is kind of financial, and Venus, which brings abundance, that kind of makes a lot of sense. Mercury and Sun in the ninth house, to me, makes a lot of sense because the ninth house is not only about higher knowledge and wisdom, but also about uh, publicity as well. Um, not to the extent that the tenth house is, but still, uh, ninth house is such a public house. It is a lot of what you are seen for. Um, what are your ideas? What are your your values? Your philosophies? So, so that all does make a lot of sense to me, um, for for the for the nation. Um, I know I'm getting off topic here, but I I can't help it. Um, I just want to wrap this, wrap this up before I go back to Libra Rising by saying, Mars in the seventh house is not as obvious to me, but maybe that was intended. Maybe they wanted some kind of aggression. I don't know why you would want that. Um, Especially with Mars and Aries, which is already really aggressive. That's, like, on the one hand, that is ideal for a country because you would have a very strong military, so that would be really great. You know, you'd be independent uh, militarily as well. But Aries starts things. You know, it, uh, to me, it would almost be more ideal to have Mars and Scorpio. And I'm not saying that you could have a perfect chart with, you know, tons of planets exalted in and domicile and get to, you know, choose which sign you want the planets to be in domicile. That would just, you'd have to wait probably thousands of years or, or at least hundreds of years. Uh, but I'm just saying from a theoretical standpoint, Mars and Scorpio would be a little bit more ideal because you would still have Mars and domicile. You'd still have a strong military, but you wouldn't be the one instigating things, or at least you wouldn't be seen as the one instigating things. You could kind of just hold your own and be independent on your own without starting shit, um, without being the aggressor, being viewed as the aggressor. So Mars and Aries, yes, it is very strong. Um, I would still stand by, you know, this is a good position if you want to start to have a country, uh, but but you would run the risk of, of that country becoming an aggressor. Um, but especially once you put Mars in the seventh house, that, uh, like, <laughs> it's almost like, this country would have better uh, a better reputation with nations that are very far from itself than nations that are closer geographically because there's all this Jupiter influence then there there's this great ninth house and tenth house and there's this um, strong Jupiter energy with Jupiter exalted so it's like this country looks really great from afar but when you actually try to interact on a more personal close level and you go more into the seventh house area, then then there's all this aggression and tension. So, so maybe maybe the founders wanted this country to be seen better than it actually is in terms of like diplomacy. Uh, that to me is very confusing. Why would you want Mars in seventh house Aries? The only reason I can think of is they would want this nation to be an aggressor. Um, they would want it to, to disrupt the status quo, for sure, especially with other um, nations. Hmm. Very curious. I'm not sure. I'm, I, I wish we could know more. And again, it's so strange that the time is clouded by such mystery when this is such a, a modern chart date. Um, but anyway, before I keep rambling, let's just cover uh, Libra Rising. So that would put chart ruler as Venus and Taurus. Again, Venus is in domicile in Taurus. And interestingly, uh, Venus at 15 degrees, 15 degrees is another degree point that is very strong because, you know, just like zero degrees is the very first degree, it's very strong because it's the beginning of the sign. 15 degrees is pretty much the middle. Um, so it is strong because it's, you, you know, you're like in this case, you're surrounded by Taurus energy. You're, you're in the midst of it. So there's kind of two strong points within each sign. That is the beginning and that, and um, the other one is the middle. So... Um, so yeah, Venus and Taurus would also be a really strong ruling planet, and especially for wealth. So you, you know, just like Virgo rising would make 
uh, information and technology the the best thing, the the thing that this country would be known for above all else. Having Venus, Venus and Taurus as the chart really, excuse me, would show that this country would be known for its resources, especially like its raw accessible uh, resources with, with Venus and Taurus. However, I think there would be a lot of secrecy and mystery. Libra is kind of mysterious, kind of dubious at times. Um, it can conceal its true intentions. And especially with you, when you have a chart ruler in the 8th house. 8th house is kind of a, a secret house. It's not always really seen. It's also a very inactive house. There's a lot kind of going on beneath, you know, beneath the surface. Not uh, visibly understood or, or you know, vi visibly accessible. Um and especially financially, so maybe there would be this, you know, great financial power, uh, especially, you know, that's already existent in this chart, but it would be especially strong with Libra rising, but there'd be some kind of um, secrecy involved, which is kind of interesting. Um, let's see what else. And then with Libra rising, that would show that this country would also be known for it, you know, it would have extra good uh, diplomacy. Um, however... If we did nudge the chart that way and we had li rising at the beginning of Libra, we would have descendant at the beginning of Aries. And so Mars would be very, very close to the, to the descendant, um, which would just exacerbate the, the issues we already have concerning aggression involving other countries. Um, you know, Mars in the seventh house would already do that. But if you put Mars exactly on the descendant or very close to it, uh, I'm almost getting chills like that. That just sounds awful you you would have constant aggression with other countries and maybe in a very profound strong way at times you know really 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 disrupting the order um of the world maybe that's what the people of this you know that cho chose this time wanted i don't know um and it's interesting too because you have libra rising so this country would be seen as you know really diplomatic and and you know wanting relations with other countries but at the same time, if Mars is on the descendant, those very relations would be turbulent and volatile in nature. They'd be, there'd be aggression on both sides. Um, so th I think there'd be a lot of like two-facedness. Like, so this country would be, I don't know, saying they want one thing, but then doing another, um, you know, like creating alliances with maybe countries that it wasn't allied to at all before, like during the Soviet Union, um, completely changing alliances and what else? And then I feel like there'd be some kind of like backstabbing or, you know, it'd be very unclear. Like there'd, there'd be like an official set of alliances and, and what's the opposite of, a, of an alliance countries that they have poor relations with and then there'd be also like this more secretive you know this is actually who we do business with or this is actually who we're allied with this is actually secretly who we ha are feuding with or whatever so, you know do you get what i'm saying so that you you would have that with mars and aries conjunct the descendant or close to the descendant and then libra rising um but yeah there'd be a lot more focus on on international relations and and uh military with libra rising as well as finance well so excuse me um so the question really becomes like do we think <laughs> is this country well first of all do, it, is the time within the correct range are we correct in thinking that this country you know was started around 2 p.m uh you know maybe maybe we are I, I don't really know i just know from these comments mostly because i couldn't find anything myself online um but if we are correct in thinking that and we're kind of trying to deduce, does this country have Virgo rising or Libra rising? Um, the question would be, is this country more concerned with information and technology? Or th are they concerned with wealth and diplomatic relations and military? Um, do they want information, technology, philosophy, maybe spirituality? Or do they want the, the wealth, the, the diplomacy, the, the militaristic aggression, frankly? with other countries. Um, and yes, right now is a charged time, charged, uh, politically charged time for Russia. We will see, you know, more over the coming years, maybe decades as well. Um, but yeah, all in all, if I just take a step back, I think, I think I've kind of said it, you know, this country wants to be a leader, at least over itself, or at least regionally. It wants, it wants everything. It wants, um, 
to be a leader with information and technology. It wants really strong wealth, a lot of resources, especially kind of hidden or, um, you know, kind of hidden resources. It wants a really strong military. And when it wants a strong military, it's in the sense of being the aggressor, being the um, on the offensive side, which is interesting. Um, strong. Yeah, very strong chart. Um, the time is a little bit confusing, but I guess you can't always have a perfect time for a chart. I'm just seeing to make sure I didn't uh, miss anything else here. If you nudge rising into Libra, it would also put the midheaven into Cancer. So that, that would also strengthen this kind of like mothering, uh, you know, being a leader through helping other countries, supporting other countries, you know, but, the, you know, cancers lead in a kind of more uh, covert way. They lead by helping other people. So, um, so that would, that would make me think as a country, they'd be leading in a more, um, you know, more covert way by supposedly helping other countries. Um, okay, that's my take on the chart. So let me know what you think. Uh, really interesting, a lot to dissect here, I think. Um, so yeah, so let me th let me know what you think. If you have any suggestions or if you want um, a reading, feel free to email me at manic.mercurian at gmail.com. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later.